Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Apollo. First off, congratulations on your awesome new scooter. If you're watching this video, that likely means you're the proud owner or soon to be owner of the newly updated Apollo Ghost. This video is intended as a tutorial for new owners and will walk you through the complete setup process, teaching you the basics of how the Ghost works and answering some of the most frequently asked questions we receive from new scooter owners. For those of you who are simply looking for specific details about setting up your new Ghost, check out the timestamps and jump around to get the exact information you're looking for. When you first open the box, you should find the following items. A brand new Apollo Ghost, a standard charger, power cable for the charger, a mini tool to set up the scooter, four rubber nut caps, an extra grub screw for the ignition, two extra inner tubes, and a basic manual. Though we do take every precaution to ship our scooters safely, sometimes boxes get damaged and items can go missing. Therefore, if you're missing anything at this stage, please contact our support team immediately and we'll be happy to assist you. First, find a flat, secure surface you can put your scooter on. We recommend a chair, bench, or even the box itself. You'll find having the scooter elevated will assist you in the setup process. From there, remove the protective wrapping and attach the handlebars directly onto the clamp by removing the four screws holding the clamp on. Once those are off, you can put your handlebars in place, making sure they're facing the right way with the throttle on the right side of the scooter before re-securing the clamp. Be sure to put all four screws back into place first before fully tightening them in a star pattern. This will ensure the handlebars sit evenly and securely. And there you can unfold the ghost by raising the stem to the fully upright position. Take the curved silver hook and attach it around the latch point here. Firmly push the folding latch all the way in. It will give you some resistance, which is normal, so you know it's fully secured. To fold the scooter down, pull on the hit and release button behind this tab and firmly pull the entire tab outwards towards you. Again, it will give you some resistance, which is a good thing, so you can ride with confidence. You can also fold the handlebars to make it more compact. All you need to do is simply twist the ring in the middle of the handlebars until the two parts are detached. And you can fold down each side. To tighten the handlebars again, raise both sides up and twist the ring inwards until fully secured. Alright, now let's get your command center up and running. As you can see, your display, brakes, and key ignition arrive loose. We do it this way so that if there's any impact in the box during shipping, things shuffle rather than break. Using your mini tool, we'll begin by tightening the items on the left side of the handlebar, starting with the key ignition and voltmeter. Position the key ignition at an angle comfortable for you and secure it in place by tightening the screw on the back of the ignition box. Turn it clockwise until secure, and next, let's move on to the left brake handle. Just like you did with the ignition box, position it at an angle that is comfortable for you. There really is no right or wrong angle, but we do recommend pushing it slightly farther down as once you're standing on the scooter, you'll be higher up than you are now. Once you find the right angle, grab your Allen key and locate the screw underneath the brake handle. If you have the hydraulic brake version of the Ghost, like we're using here, tighten the two screws facing you. Again, insert the key and turn clockwise until you reach the maximum position. Then, give the brake a few squeezes to make sure they're stable and comfortable. And while you're here, don't forget to tighten your bell. Moving on to the right side of the handlebar, let's position the buttons. Just like before, find your perfect angle, then tighten the screw on the back of the button piece. We're then going to secure the right brake, and this one can be a bit tricky. You're going to want to keep enough clearance between the throttle and the brake handle to avoid your finger getting stuck between the two. For this reason, we suggest tightening the right brake handle a little bit lower. And last but not least, let's attach your Ghost display. Again, find an angle that allows you to easily see the screen. Then, using your Allen key, tighten the four screws on the top of the display. And that's it. You should be all set as far as your command center goes. However, let's perform a quick check to make sure everything is working properly. Start by turning the key ignition using the key attached to your brake line. 
Then hold the blue power button for two to three seconds until it turns on. But don't grab your helmet just yet. We've got a few more things to cover before we start riding. Pull the throttle and have the wheels spin mid-air. Check the wheels to make sure the motors are spinning straight. Then click the single dual motor button to activate the second motor and confirm it is working correctly. After that, slam both brakes and confirm they work as well. A full slam on the brake handles helps align your calipers right out of the box and confirms they're effectively stopping the wheels. If you notice any brake rubbing, rest assured this is quite normal right out of the box, so when adjusting your brakes, we tend to lean on the tighter side. This means your brake pads are closer to the disc, allowing you to stop on a dime. However, after a few rides, the brake pads will wear down a bit and the rubbing sound should go away. Alright guys, now let's turn the scooter off again and move on to the tires. The ideal tire pressure for your Ghost is 50 PSI and we inflate your inner tubes to this level at the factory before shipping. However, we recommend that you double check the tire pressure before you hit the road and periodically every couple months after that. All you need to do is unscrew the valve cap, put on a pressure gauge, and check the tire pressure. You may not know that the number one cause of flat tires are improperly inflated inner tubes, both over and under inflated. So do stick to the recommended PSI and do regular checkups. Although your scooter comes partially charged, we recommend giving it a full charge prior to your maiden voyage. Because in the odd event of a battery or charger malfunction, you'll be able to identify it right away and get in touch with us to make it right, rather than getting stranded in the middle of nowhere with no juice. Grab your charger box and power cable and attach them to each other, then plug one end to the wall and the other into your scooter's charging port. Plugging the charger into the wall first allows you to minimize the risk of sparking from the charging port. And no, it doesn't matter which of the two charging ports you use, they will both charge the battery just fine. The easiest way to know your scooter is fully charged is by checking the charger box light. When charging, it will be red. When fully charged, it will turn green. Once fully charged, simply unplug it and pop the rubber cap back onto the charging port. For those of you concerned about charging your Ghost overnight, there's no need to worry. You can leave your scooter plugged in overnight, however, just like your phone, it's best not to leave it plugged in long term. Congratulations, you successfully set up your Apollo Ghost. But before you hit the open road, let's take a quick look at how it actually works. Let's start by inserting the key again and turning it on. You should see the display show the current battery voltage. For the 52 volt version, the maximum when fully charged should be about 58.6 volts, and the cutoff level when nearly drained is about 44.2 volts. While driving your scooter, it's normal to see the voltage fluctuate as you accelerate or climb hills. This simply means your battery is consuming more power at that moment. To get an accurate read of the voltage, simply release the throttle and see what the voltage meter settles on when the scooter is not consuming any energy. With the key still in the ignition, press and hold the power button to turn on the display. The display will then power on and you should see your speedometer. Then click on the mode button to shift from gear 1 to 2 to 3 and then back to 1. Once riding, gears are quick ways to limit your top speed. In gear 1, you'll max out around 15 miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour. In gear 2, you'll get up to about 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. In gear 3, you'll reach the maximum top speed of 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour. However, do keep in mind the faster you go, the shorter the range you'll get out of the battery. On the display, you will also see the battery icon. This is a proxy for your voltage meter. Use it to get a general idea of the charge level, however, for a more exact read, consult the voltage display as previously discussed. The Ghost also comes equipped with lights, and to turn them on, simply press and hold the mode button. To turn them off, press and hold again. For a more detailed video on how to modify the advanced settings, be sure to check out our previous video walking you through all the different settings. Next, let's move on to the buttons. You should see the button module with Eco, Turbo, and Single Dual. Eco and Turbo do exactly what they say. They reduce or increase the discharge, leading to either a more economic riding experience or a turbocharged one. The single and dual motor buttons are also quite intuitive, however, there is a critical note here. Don't ever, under any circumstance, switch from dual to single while riding. This will cause a scooter to downshift like a car, thus creating a braking force and can lead to falls and injuries. To engage dual motor mode, simply push this button down. And when the Eco Turbo button is pushed down, then Eco mode is engaged. Last but not least, you have your throttle. To test this out, simply press the throttle to accelerate, making sure you do so gently at first to get a feel for the scooter's power. The throttle works gradually, so the more throttle you apply, the faster you'll go. Your brakes work similarly. Press to apply braking force and squeeze all the way to come to a complete stop. We recommend starting with slow speeds to get used to both the acceleration and the braking of the Ghost. And that pretty much wraps up the basics of how your Ghost works. But before we finish, let's take a quick look at a few commonly asked questions we get from first-time riders. Number one, how does charging with two chargers work? The Ghost features two charging ports to let you charge it more quickly. 
If you purchase a fast charger, do not use it at the same time as your regular charger. The dual ports can only be used simultaneously with two regular chargers or two fast chargers, but not one of each. Number two, is it waterproof? The Ghost is IP54 water resistant. It can withstand light splashes, but in general, try to avoid rain, snow, or deep puddles as water damage can void your warranty. Number three, how do I clean it? It's best to use a damp cloth with a little bit of soap for most of the components. And you can check out our previous cleaning videos for more details. Number four, what should I do for maintenance? Again, we have a dedicated video for this linked below, but in general, check your tire pressure and inflate to 50 PSI when needed. Adjust your brakes and replace brake pads when necessary, lubricate the bearings, and perform a visual check to scan for external damage. Number five, how do I get help if I have a problem? Always start by visiting the support page on our website for any type of help. There, you'll find a wealth of knowledge, repair videos, and troubleshooting guides. And if you can't find what you need, or if you have a different question, you can always speak with us directly by contacting our support staff via our website, apollosquivers.co. And you should now be all set to ride your new Apollo Ghost. Hope you love your new machine, and don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, ride safe.